So here we are exploring limits and continuity in space or in three dimensions. And now the limit of a vector valued function defined as vector r of t is equal to f of t times unit vector i plus g of t times unit vector j plus h of t times unit vector k is defined and evaluated similarly to that of scalar valued functions. So let's explore. So the limit of a vector valued function so if there exists a vector L such that the absolute value of the vector valued function R of T minus vector L can be made arbitrarily small by taking T sufficiently close to A, then we say that the limit of vector R as T approaches A is vector L. So what are we saying here? Well, we're just saying that the limit of the vector valued function R of T as t approaches a is equal to vector l. And of course this is provided that, so provided that the limit of the absolute value of vector r of t minus vector l as t approaches a is equal to zero. So that's our formal definition here for the limit. And this transitions quite nicely and is very straightforward when we're actually going through and computing limits. So let's take a look. So we want to begin by considering some vector valued function r of t defined by the components f of t, g of t, h of t. And this is, of course, such that t is our arbitrary parameter, so it's a real number, a scalar value. And now, in order for the limit of the vector-valued function to exist, the limit of each one of these components must exist. So let's go ahead and suppose that the limit, as t approaches a, of f of t is equal to the component l sub 1. And we'll go ahead and we'll let the limit as t approaches a of g of t is equal to the component l sub 2. And we also need to go ahead and suppose that the limit of h of t as t is approaching a is equal to l sub 2, 3, excuse me. So if these three individual limits exist, then the full limit can exist. So then we're able to say that the limit as t is approaching a of vector r of t. And now we can think about this as the limit as t is approaching a of that vector valued function. So this is of f of t, g of t, h of t. And now we can separate this into three individual limits. This is equal to so we can even keep it in its vector form. So we have the limit, and actually we should give ourselves plenty of room. So this is equal to the vector with the limit of each individual component. So we have the limit as t approaches a of f of t. We then have the limit as t approaches a of g of t. And we have the limit as t approaches a of h of t. And we already know these three limits exist, so this is going to be equal to the vector with components l sub 1, l sub 2, l sub 3. And so this is that same full vector l.